Episode 15 is all about the Edomites. I've broken it down into five parts. In part three, I will be discussing the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire's role in the Kingdom of Judea. In part four, I will be talking about prophecy in general, how it works, and how the Edomites fit into prophecy. In part five, we will have all of the information covered and then we will discuss who are the Edomites today. Thanks for joining the Christian Perspective channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. Welcome to the Christian Perspective channel, a place for people to learn the Word of God, the Bible. I have no affiliation with any organization in this world. My affiliation is with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who guides all believers into all truth. If you want a fearless, truth-seeking Bible study with no agenda other than learning the truth of God's Word, then this is the place for you. Welcome aboard. In this part three of our series about Edom, we begin with a brief history of Rome, where it came from, and how Rome became involved in the kingdom of Judea, and how Rome set up the Edomite kings over Judea, and their role in the life of Jesus Christ and John the Baptist and the early Christian church, and how it led to the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the Edomites, or was it? During Isaiah's time, Rome was a small kingdom centered around the city of Rome itself. In approximately 509 BC, Rome became a republic instead of having kings. And the leaders were elected into office rather than having a royal family. During the time of the republic, Rome expanded to include what is now Italy, France, Spain, Greece, the North African co coast, and part of Asia Minor. Pompey the Great was of Roman nobility and a successful military general. Pompey defeated Syria in 69 BC, making it a Roman province in 64 BC. It was at this time Pompey was in Damascus when the two warring factions of the civil war in Judea approached him to settle a dispute. The two brothers, Hyrcanus II and Aristobulus II of the Hasmonean dynasty were fighting over the crown after their mother, Queen Salome Alexandra, died. The two brothers met with Pompey in Damascus to resolve the issue. However, Pompey decided he would visit Jerusalem himself and decide how to resolve it. Aristobulus II did not wait for Pompey's decision and assembled his armies, taking control of Jerusalem, eventually refusing to allow the Romans to enter the city. Pompey besieged Jerusalem and the temple for three months before taking it. He installed Hyrcanus II as high priest and made Judea a client state of Rome, forcing them to pay tribute. Hyrcanus II was now the puppet king under Rome, with Antipater the Idumean as his chief advisor. It was at this time that the historical moment occurred when Pompey entered the sanctuary of the temple, which desecrated it. He then ordered the Jewish priests to do what was necessary to cleanse the temple and took nothing from it. In 59 BC, Pompey entered an alliance with Julius Caesar and Crassus. Historians call this the first triumvirate of Rome. This is where there are three leaders. They each are ruling over a piece of Rome, but it's all one kingdom of Rome. It's a triumvirate. So, Pompey married Caesar's daughter, Julia, to seal the alliance. When Julia died in childbirth, the alliance began to fall apart. 
This descended into a Roman civil war between Pompey and Julius Caesar. Pompey was defeated in battle by Caesar and fled to Egypt by ship in 48 BC. While waiting the answer from Egypt to submit on the ship offshore, the Egyptian pharaoh Ptolemy XIII conspired to assassinate him rather than go to war with Caesar. They called Pompey to shore, and three men stabbed him to death. When Julius Caesar arrived in Egypt, they presented to him Pompey's head and seal. This left Julius Caesar the sole ru ruler of the Roman world. When Julius Caesar was given the head of Pompey, he shed tears. He then had the assassins put to death, which led to a civil war in Egypt. Antipater the Idumean, the chief advisor to the Hasmonean king Hyrcanus II, was quick to come with 3,000 men to the aid of Julius Caesar in Egypt, who was besieging the city of Alexandria. After winning the victory, Caesar awarded Antipater by giving him Roman citizenship and making him the governor of Judea. So now here Antipater is the first Edomite governor of Judea in 47 BC. Antipater then made his own two sons governors, Herod, governor of Galilee, and Phasael, governor of Jerusalem. Antipater was poisoned, leaving his sons as governors under Roman authority. Herod the Great, this is the, the, the son Herod, Herod the Great is remembered for, magnifi for his magnificent building structures, high and lofty fortresses, and unbounded tyranny. Herod, the son of Antipater, the Idumean, was the governor of Galilee for two years before Antigonus, the, the son of Aristobulus, the Hasmonean king, who had been deposed by Pompey, in favor of Hyrcanus II, made an alliance with the Parthian Empire, who were enemies of Rome, to reseize the throne of Judea, which had been taken by Antipater and Rome. After seeing the success of Antigonus on Jerusalem, Herod fled to Rome for help, where he was appointed king of Judea by the Roman Senate in 40 BC, even though he was an Edomian by descent. Herod then returned to Judea to win his kingdom from Antigonus and the Parthians with the support of Mark Antony of Rome behind him. In order to gain support of the Jewish people, he married Miriam, a teenage niece of Antigonus, who was one of the last survivors of the Hasmonean dynasty. This gave Herod a claim of legitimacy among the Jews to the throne of Judea. In order to marry Miriam, Herod banished his current wife, Doris, along with his three-year-old son, Antipater. Herod besieged Jerusalem in 37 BC along with several Roman legions provided by Mark Antony. The Jewish people fought hard against Herod and Rome because they were seen as a foreign invasion against their king Antigonus. Herod's victory in Jerusalem marked the end of the Hasmonean dynasty and the beginning of the Herodian dynasty in Judea. Mark Antony was one of the three dictators of Rome during the second triumvirate at this time, along with Octavian and Marcus Lepidus. Mark Antony married Octavian's sister, but he was the lover of Cleopatra, the queen of Egypt. Herod is remembered for his tyrannical ruthlessness. 
He executed anyone he saw as a threat to his throne. When he gained Jerusalem, his first act was to execute anyone from the old dynasty who may have been a threat to him. Herod eventually executed all remaining loyalty from the Hasmonean dynasty, including his own wife, Miriam, and her children. His tyranny often overshadows his huge building projects, rivaling Rome itself. His greatest achievement was the temple in Jerusalem. He built onto it for 47 years. He, he made it. He added on to the second temple, making it one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and the pride of the Jewish people. He also built the city of Caesarea Maritima, the first man-made port on the Judean coast, the first port built using a form of underwater concrete. He also built several palace fortresses in Judea, the most famous being Masada, a palace and fortress on top of a 1,300-foot mountain. He also built Herodium, a huge city, and a palace built on the top of a mountain. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, we read, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and he sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, who would not be comforted because they are not. This King Herod is the one who tried to kill Christ at his birth. The three wise men came from the east and spoke to Herod, asking him, Where is the one born king of the Jews? Herod saw this as a threat to be dealt with and asked the wise men to come see him after they had found the child that he might worship him also. The wise men were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, so they left by another way. When Herod saw that he had been fooled, he ordered the slaughter of every child under two years old in Bethlehem. A reference here is also made by the Matthew to the prophet Jeremiah, who spoke of Rachel weeping for her children because they are not. In the, in the last episode, episode 14, we learn that Rachel, the wife of Jacob, died in Bethlehem in childbirth to her second son, Benjamin, who was named Benjamin, and he was the first son of the new man, Israel. When Jacob was renamed Israel, right after that was when Benjamin was born, and Rachel died giving birth to him in Bethlehem. And she was buried in Bethlehem. And she lost the competition with her older sister Leah. She named her son Benoni, which means son of my sorrow. But Israel, his father, named him Benjamin, son of my right hand. We will talk more about this later, but this is the Rachel weeping for her children. Rome becomes an empire. It was during Herod the Great's reign that Rome became an empire and no longer a republic. After becoming sole dictator of Rome, Julius Caesar had named Octavian his adopted son as his sole heir. When Julius Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC, Octavian, Marcus Lepidus, and Mark Antony joined forces to defeat the supporters of the assassins who tried to take over Rome. This victory left the three rulers as rulers in Rome. This is the second triumvirate. After his death, Julius Caesar was the first Roman leader to be deified. Are made into a god. 
Octavian took on the status of son of a god, which eventually led to the practice of living Roman emperors being deified as living gods. Mark Antony was given Rome's eastern provinces and Egypt to rule over. He was also given Octavian's sister in marriage. However, he also became a lover to Cleopatra, the queen of Egypt. The triumvirate eventually fell apart. Lepidus was expelled and civil war broke out between Mark Antony and Octavian in 31 BC. Octavian had Mark Antony declared a traitor to Rome and declared war on Cleopatra, queen of Egypt. In 30 BC, Octavian defeated Cleopatra and Mark Antony in a naval battle at Actium. Octavian pursued them to Egypt, where Mark Antony's army joined Octavian. Mark Antony fell on his sword and was taken to Cleopatra where he died in her arms. Cleopatra then allowed herself to be bitten by a serpent, thus also committing suicide. Octavian then had Cleopatra's son, whom she had from Julius Caesar, killed, because, as he said, two Caesars are one too many. The three children between Mark Antony and Cleopatra were taken to Rome. After the defeat of Antony, Octavian was given the name Augustus by the Roman Senate and became the sole emperor of Rome. The month of August is named after Augustus. Augustus died in 14 AD and was succeeded by his adopted son Tiberius. And we also read in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So here Augustus is mentioned here in the Gospel of Luke, which brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. And Herod was the governor of Judea, or the king of Jews, and he is the one who slaughtered the innocents in Bethlehem. Now Herod the Great suffered a slow and painful death due to disease. In his deathbed, he ordered that the noblemen from every city in Judea be taken into custody, and upon his death they were to be executed, so that the Jews who would not mourn for him would have some reason to mourn. After his death, the noblemen were freed and his order was ignored. The Jews of Judea rejoiced, after Herod's death in 4 BC, his kingdom was divided among his three sons by Caesar Augustus. Herod Archelaus became the Tetrarch of Judea. Herod Antipa be became the Tetrarch of Galilee. And Philip became the Tetrarch of the lands east of the Jordan River. Now in Matthew we read, When Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Arch Archelaus did reign in Judea, and in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. So this is why uh, he went to Galilee, because Galilee was ruled over by a different son of Herod than Archelaus. Uh, apparently Archelaus was not a nice man either. 
Now, after a trip to Rome to battle with the family members over the will of his father, Archelaus ruled for ten years over the Tetrarchy of Judea. After a severely tyrannical rule and several complaints by the Jews to Rome, Herod's son Archelaus was banished by Rome in 6 AD, and Judea became a Roman province governed by a Roman prefect. The capital was moved from Jerusalem to Caesarea Maritima, the port city built by Herod. Pontius Pilate was the prefect from 26 to 36 AD and famous for condemning Jesus Christ to death, even though he found no fault in him. He crucified Christ as an offering to placate the Jews who were calling for his death. Herod's son Philip ruled the lands east of the Jordan until 34 AD when his, be- when his kingdom became part of the Roman province of Syria. Herod Antipater, also known as Herod Antipas, ruled Galilee until 39 AD. He appears in the New Testament. He is best known for beheading John the Baptist and also condemning Jesus. Remember, all of these Herods are Edomites. Um, Pontius Pilate sent Jesus to stand trial before Herod Antipas, who happened to be in Jerusalem at the time, as it was the Passover festival. Herod sent him back to Pilate after Jesus refused to speak. Herod Antipas was the one whom Jesus referred to as that fox. The time of the ministry of Jesus Christ between his birth and death and resurrection falls within this period. Herod Agrippa was the grandson of Herod the Great. He was the son of Aristobulus, one of the two sons of Herod the Great by Miriam, the Hasmonean princess Herod had married and then killed. He executed his two sons for treason. When Herod Agrippa's father was executed, the son of Herod, he sent the grandson to Rome to be educated. So Herod the Great was very rich and afforded him the best education possible. Herod Agrippa became friends with the current emperor Tiberius, as well as the future emperor Caligula. Herod Agrippa was overheard wishing for the death of Tiberius and the advancement of Caligula, and he was cast into prison. After the death of Tiberius in 37 AD and the ascension of Caligula to the seat of emperor, Caligula freed Herod Agrippa and made him king over Syria the former territory of his uncle Philip. He also exchanged the iron chain he wore around his neck with a gold chain of equal weight. When Herod Agrippa first came to Jerusalem, he dedicated the gold chain to the temple in Jerusalem. In 39 AD, through his friendship with Emperor Caligula, Agrippa had his uncle Herod Antipa banished and took over to the Tetrarchy of Galilee as well. When Caligula was assassinated in 41 AD, Claudius was declared emperor. Because Herod Agrippa supported Claudius in gaining the throne, Claudius awarded Herod Agrippa with Judea and Samaria, which basically restored to him the kingdom once ruled over by his grandfather Herod the Great. Herod Agrippa was well liked by the Jews because he spent a lot of money improving cities his grandfather had built. He also intervened, preventing Caligula from setting a statue of himself up in the temple in Jerusalem, which would have been a national disaster leading to civil war. Although he is remembered as a wise and kind leader by the Jews, he is not so remembered by the New Testament. Now a lot of historians will say, oh this makes the New Testament wrong because the Jews loved Herod Agrippa. Or the New Testament 
paints him as a real tyrant. Well, the reason for that is because the Jews hated the Christians and were persecuting the Christians, and Herod Agrippa was also persecuting the Christians. So the New Testament records Herod Agrippa as a tyrant persecuting the Christians. So he's remembered favorably by the Jews, but not favorably by the Christians. In the entire chapter of Acts, chapter 12, we read about Herod Agrippa. He killed James, the brother of John. He put Peter into prison. There was no Easter at that time. The King James Version says Easter. It was actually the Passover. Peter was freed from prison by an angel, and Herod Agrippa had the guards executed. Herod then moved from Jerusalem to Caesarea Maritima, and he struck down by an angel of God in 44 AD for allowing the people in the amphitheater to call him a god. And that is recorded in Acts chapter 12. The people gave a shout, It is the voice of a god and not a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. When Herod Agrippa died, he left one son, a 17-year-old Agrippa II. He was the last member of the Herodian dynasty, sent to Rome for education, and a procurator was set up to govern the provinces. Herod Agrippa II never recovered the kingdom of his father, even though he was very rich and he was king of the Jews by name. He did not have the influence in Rome that his father did. He does appear in the New Testament in Acts chapter 25 as King Agrippa when Paul stood trial before the Roman procurator Festus. Agrippa II was not well liked by the Jews as his father because he married his sister Bernice and was considered immoral. He was far more on the side of the Romans in his rule than on the side of the Jews. He was expelled from Jerusalem by the Jews in 66 AD at the beginning of the First Jewish-Roman War. So Agrippa is uh, the one that Paul spoke to in Acts chapter 25. That was Herod Agrippa II. Uh, now, the First Jewish-Roman War was from 66 A.D. to 70 A.D. The First Jewish-Roman War was also called the Great Revolt. As the Jews were represented less by Herod Agrippa II than they were by his father, they became more agitated and popular re rebellions against taxation began to break out. This anti-Roman mood had been increasingly growing for decades in Judea, giving rise to a group called the Zealots. The Zealots were focused on throwing off Roman rule from Judea, believing that God would be on their side if they would only fight. As Rome's oppression grew, so popular support for the Zealots also grew. Soon, Roman citizens were being attacked in the streets. The Roman procurator, Florus, took a large quantity of gold from the temple, claiming it was for the emperor. This infuriated the Jews, causing more rebellion. Florus responded by rounding up and crucifying a large number of Jews. This broke out into open revolt in Jerusalem in 66 AD. Agrippa II and the other Roman leaders fled for their lives. The Roman 12th Legion, stationed in Syria, was sent to quell the rebellion and restore order. A legion consisted of 5,000 elite soldiers, followed by other non-citizen infantry. After failing to take Jerusalem, the Roman army retreated 
to wait for reinforcements. They were then ambushed by the Jews and slaughtered with a loss of 6,000 troops. The Jews then stripped the Roman soldiers of their armor and weapons, encouraging other surrounding communities to join the rebellion. This loss of an elite legion sent shockwaves through Rome, and retribution was forthcoming. Now there's a verse here, Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 21, is when Jesus said, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And let them which were in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which were in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. So this is uh, when the Christians began to flee, when they saw this war break out. Because of this verse they remembered from Jesus. Now the, Rem the Roman general Vespasian, you see this slaughter of this legion gave the Christians the chance to get out. The Roman general Vespasian, along with his son Titus, as second in command, were given four legions, accompanied by Herod Agrippa II and his army, to quell the revolt. Vespasian entered Galilee in 67 AD and began to overtake the rebels city by city. As the Romans overtook parts of Galilee, more Jews fled to their stronghold in Jerusalem. This led to bloody infighting within Jerusalem, itself between different factions who wanted control. As Vespasian approached Jerusalem, he was stalled by news of civil war in Rome. Emperor Nero, who had sent Vespasian to Judea, had committed suicide. This began the year of the four emperors in Rome. As several candidates were vying for control over Rome and dying in the process, Vespasian left his son Titus in charge of the army and headed for Egypt to secure Rome's grain supplies because members of the Jewish rebellion had taken ships and disrupted grain shipments headed to Rome from Egypt. As Rome was very dependent on grain from Egypt at that time. And Vespasian was proclaimed emperor in Alexandria, Egypt supported by the legions of the east. He then headed for Rome, claiming his office and beginning the Flavian dynasty in Rome, being the fourth in the year of the four emperors. He was the fourth emperor and ended up winning. Meanwhile, Titus moved on Jerusalem. He surrounded Jerusalem with four legions, besieging the city for seven months. Over one million people died in the siege. During the Passover, Titus allowed the Jews to enter the city as it was their religious duty to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. However, he did not allow them to leave, nor did the zealots, who saw this as a blessing, giving them greater numbers. Titus also saw it as a blessing because it would put a greater strain on their food and water supplies. Titus built a wall of earth around the city as high as the city walls, making a large trench on the inside. Anyone caught trying to escape was crucified on the wall facing the city. There were several thousand people crucified on the wall facing the city all around. As the Romans began peace negotiations, the people were content to wait rather than fight. The zealots burned the food supplies in the city in order to force the people to fight against the siege. This resulted in thousands of people starving to death within the city. The survivors actually ate the flesh of the dead to keep from starving themselves. The Romans eventually broke through the three walls and burned the city, taking most of the people into slavery. The zealots retreated into the temple itself. 
which was the inner stronghold. The Romans tried to defeat the zealots without destroying the temple because it was a beautiful structure. It was one of the wonders of the ancient world. And they wanted to, de to dedicate the temple to their emperor. However, the temple caught fire and was completely burned, and the zealots were defeated in 70 AD. The second temple was left a burned-out ruin of broken stone. Titus, who eventually became emperor after his father, then sailed back to Rome, leaving his general to complete mop-up operations of the remaining strongholds in Judea. The Titus Arch still stands in Rome today. It was built in honor of Titus's victory after his death. The arch is a monument depicting his triumphal entry into Rome after his victory over Jerusalem, showing the temple furnishings and the slaves in a victory parade entering Rome. The mop-up operations took place in three main locations, Herodium, Machaerus, and Masada, which were strongholds built or restored by Herod the Great. The most famous of these battles was the fall of Masada in 73 AD, which signifies the final mopping up of the Great Revolt. At Masada, which is a fortress on top of a high precipice, the Romans entered the fortress after a siege of a few months, only to find the 960 rebels inside had committed suicide rather than be captured. After this war, the Idumeans became a lost nation, never heard from again. There were a group of Idumeans within Jerusalem during the revolt who were killed, and Herod Agrippa II faded into history. This marks the end of the Edomites as a people.